This is a new moon reading on the 17th of July. The cards have come out in a pyramid shape. Um, it suggests to me, well, there is a connection to Egypt in the cards, and um, but it also suggests a sort of strong foundation and, um, a, yeah, a sort of connection to he to the heavens and earth. Um, yeah, and it might even be some kind of bridge. Um, so to start with, the underlying cards were these three. Um, we've got two knights, uh, two messengers. One uh, is kind of aggressive in a way, and he has quite a sort of shocking message. And the other is a knight of emotions, so more loving and soft and there's this nautilus shell uh behind behind it um which sort of reminds me of sacred geometry the fibonacci series and uh yeah that this perhaps there's a kind of message from these two to this person with the fish so um, the fish is made up of birds um, and it sort of suggests a fish out of water. It could suggest a sort of flying fish or, um, yeah, it could be a sort of fish of knowledge. Um, so it's also a message of faith, I suppose, isn't it, with the fish? It has that connotation. Um, then we have the five of pentacles, uh, where we have this loyal dog looking in the window of the church and seeing this, the warmth of the, the candle in the window, that kind of spark of hope in the cold. Um, then we have the four of wands, the 11, 11 card. It can suggest marriage or it can suggest celebration, or it can suggest kind of stepping through um, this uh, kind of portal to a new future. Um, yeah, so very much a card of change and celebration. And then we have two page cards, this time the page of swords and the page of wands. And um, it could be a sequence of the same page, sort of going from one uh, stage to another. So we've got this page who looks a little bit like King Arthur, sort of pledging his allegiance in um, or loyalty to whatever this stone is in Egyptian hieroglyphics. And we have got the pyramids behind him. Um, in the next row, there's quite a lot to do with meditation and, um, again, sacred geometry and communication. So this first card is the patterns the tide leaves on the sand and the water as the, the tide drains out. Um, but it reminds me very much of communication through water and, um the patterns that are left in water, water consciousness, I suppose, isn't it? Where um, you can leave patterns by projecting emotions onto, onto water and you get these incredible patterns. Um, there's a lot of patterning in this guy's shirt. He's meditating and this is the seed of life or the, I can't remember what it's called now, the flower pattern. Um, which is sacred geometry, and then there's this geometry of the pattern of Venus around the sun, around his head, so, um, yeah, it's kind of, again, in this card we've got the pattern of Venus around the sun here, and it's, both of these cards seem to suggest communication with Venus through the third eye, 
and then it's sort of coming down into the hands as well so yeah this kind of loving message is perhaps being communicated through the hands or being shared through the hands um, and this figure is also meditating perhaps grounding energy um, the trees represent a connection, a bridge from the heaven to the earth. And they also have these eyes on them, these silver birches. So it's very much about sort of consciousness and connection and the third eye um, and sort of grounding energy. Um, and we also have, um, again, another sort of watery image two swans which represents lovers to me and one of them is putting their head through the water which could be um, another realm sort of another worldly realm sort of thing so communicating uh, oh gosh communicating through water scrying maybe um, on the row the last row We've got a bridge with the six of swords or six of voices between two realms with the hands here. We've got a pyramid shape, we've got the hands and we've got someone stepping over or about to step over like the fool almost, taking a leap of faith into another realm. Uh, there's a lot, these middle cards here are quite similar in that they represent, they, they have this sort of symmetry and I wasn't sure if it was a splitting apart or merging sort of energy but with the olive branch here it does make me think of the two sides merging even though there is a little bit of resistance and with this X here and the X of the arms there there's this kind of resistance for this gift the X in runes represents a gift and um, yeah, in this card, we've got the source. Um, roses are about love as well, but there seems to be this mirroring of vibration between the two different uh, entities, I suppose. Um, and here, even though this is the devil, the devil is the butterfly and um, there's this kind of uh, rising up um, perhaps uh, transformation with the butterfly uh, from one realm to another realm and there is this kind of portal through here uh, we also have a moth in this final image so the the butterfly this sort of transformative idea is repeated again um in the nine of emotions this is the wish card um we've got somebody meditating again we've got these uh shells or lanterns um that kind of look like they're protective they could be crystals around this figure as well um, but because this landscape here reminds me of Venice, it's making me think of Murano glass. Perhaps they are lanterns, and perhaps it connects to the five of uh, the faith in this five of pentacles card. Uh, and the final card is this death image, which represents transformation. Um, but also there's this kind of uh, it makes me think of the, the self and the higher self and the moth is this kind of bridge moving between the two the head is opening and this it's all, it is almost like a sort of bridging energy it's like a bridge or movement between the two the, the lower self and the higher self um, and perhaps it, it's representative of the Merkabar or um, something like that, but this cobweb kind of um, 
is like a sensitive net to keep the moth connected. So I hope that makes some sort of sense to you.